don't shoot. Good evening, I'm Ernie Freeman. We've got untrained folks dishing out beatings in schools. How can that be right? Show me the money and the bullets. Good evening, I'm Ernie Freeman. One giant step for the suburbs. Is spanking a good way to make children act right? Who do you blame the most for your son, Damian Eccles, being convicted and then in prison for those 18 years. Here to talk about this, the head of the Memphis Tea Party, Mark Skoda, the Fox 13 political analyst, Joseph Kyles, is at Memphis International, some of the highest prices in the country. Why are they so high, and when will the prices come down? Your conservative friends up there in Indiana, Ben, I gotta tell you, they're, they're a little off the reservation yeah. these days. What is the city saying about this rushing police officers back into the line of duty, obviously not physically fit to get the job done? Is this a good idea, trying to oust an 18-year veteran of the Tennessee House? Two top stories tonight. Here's the first, Memphis police ammunition and money. Raising some eyebrows down in Memphis City Hall, the money was supposed to be repaid to the city by a police training company. We're talking $34,000. The bullets? missing from a police shooting range. 26,000 rounds of ammo unaccounted for tonight. We'll get to that in a minute. The other big story, Nashville decides to get out of our business and let Memphis annex parts of Shelby County if it wants to. The state attorney general ruling that efforts to block Memphis's ability to annex land, unconstitutional. So Republican State Senator Mark Norris of Collierville withdrew his bill that would have blocked Memphis's potential to grow. Now, earlier today, I spoke with Memphis City Councilman Lee Harris about the missing money, the missing bullets, and the apparent victory over Nashville on the annexation issue. Hey, Councilman, thanks for coming on tonight. And let's start with these uh, missing rounds of ammunition. Very little control in respect to accountability. Officers don't even have to sign their name. These are bullets we're talking about here. Why hasn't this been addressed before? And what brought it to your attention? The cost of booking a flight from Memphis International Airport high and rising. Memphis ranks third highest in the nation for airfares behind only Cincinnati and Huntsville. The average round trip fare from Memphis, $472.46. The national average price for a round trip ticket is $360. And since 2000, the price of an airline ticket in Memphis has soared a whopping 31%. So, why are the prices so high, and when can Mid-South Air travelers expect some relief? And, and for the direct, it would have been how much? Over 800. And it's been that way for a long time. Thanks for using Delta. For more than 20 years, Memphis has ranked in the top 10 for the most expensive airports to fly to and from. A horrible statistic when you consider Memphis is one of the poorest cities in the country. The folks who run the airport here say there is a reason for the high ticket prices. And the reason is simple, they say. It's economics. Dodging a bullet. Good evening, I'm Ernie Freeman. The Mid-South bracing for a blast from Old Man Winter today. But so far, that blast has eh, not really been a blast. Now, the fear is, though, that all of that rain, the sleet, might freeze on the roadways overnight. That could be a major concern. Fox 13's chief meteorologist Joey Salapex has been tracking this all day. Joey, what's the deal here? Are we going to have a slippery, slidey kind of drive in tomorrow? Well, the way you drive, yes. <laughs> you visited your son on death row in prison. Did you ever ask him, Damien, did you do this? No, I never had to ask Damien. I knew he didn't do it. Here to talk about this, the head of the Memphis Tea Party, Mark Skoda, and Fox 13 political analyst Joseph Kyles, and Gentlemen, the Republicans are already rejecting this budget plan, saying the president is punishing job creators. And Mark, the polls say the American people agree with the president here that rich people don't pay their fair share. Is this a losing argument for the GOP then to go against this budget? No, I don't think so. First of all, this is a political year budget. Gaining ground. Good evening, I'm Ernie Freeman. After months of contentious politicking, the Shelby County Commission is one step away from redrawing district lines for voters. And it looks like the small, voter-friendly, single-member districts is what they're going to go with. The man behind the plan, Commissioner Steve Mulroy, he has been pushing for this 13 single-member district deal the whole time and says at this point it's inevitable. I spoke with him earlier today. Commissioner Mulroy, thanks for uh, being here. And Commissioners Chris Thomas and uh, Heidi Schaefer voting in favor of these uh, single-member uh, districts in this redistricting plan. Both had previously opposed this plan. What changed their votes? Well, 
Ernie, I think two things. Let's turn to a move now by folks in Midtown to oust a longtime serving state lawmaker. Because of redistricting, several Midtown neighbors are now in District 90, John DeBerry's district. Gays and lesbians in those areas say DeBerry is not progressive enough to represent them, and he has to go. So they're raising funds and looking for a candidate to run against DeBerry. Fox 13's Lauren Lee is here with more on this. And Lauren, you spoke to uh, Jonathan Cole, the, the Midtowner who's leading this fight. What is his beef with uh, John DeBerry? Is this a good idea, trying to oust an 18-year veteran of the Tennessee House? I spoke with Michelle Bliss, co-chair of the Tennessee Equality Project. Among the questions, is the gay and lesbian community willing to work with DeBerry? Okay, Michelle, do you agree with your colleague Jonathan that Representative DeBerry is not right to represent Midtown? I'm afraid I do. Is spanking children still an acceptable form of discipline? The corporal punishment debate has raged for years, especially in the schools. 19 states allow educators to spank or paddle school children. The red states are the ones that allow it. Memphis banned the practice a few years ago, but they still spank them in the old Shelby County school system. And after the school merger on paper, who knows what's going to happen with that. But is spanking a good way to make children act right? The Reverend Kenneth Whalem Jr. is on the new unified school board. And Reverend Whalem, you say it's okay for someone other than a child's parent to spank them in school. You favor corporal punishment. Why? Well, because appropriately administered, corporal punishment has been proven to help a child uh, correct misbehavior. It's just it's a matter of, of public record, man. Appropriately administered. We're going to come back to that in just a second. But we, we talked to Jordan Rake with uh, Project No Spank out in California today. And here's what he had to say about corporal punishment in the school systems. Corporal punishment were a legitimate part of education. Wouldn't the teachers' colleges teach it? They don't. You can't find a teachers' college that teaches how to paddle. And there's a reason for that. Yeah. Reverend Whalem talking about appropriately administered. He, he, doesn't he have a point? We've got untrained folks dishing out beatings in schools. How can that be right? Well, it would be terrible to have untrained personnel doing it. But well, we don't teach we don't teach teachers and principals how to spank kids. Do exactly, we? which is what I mean by appropriately administered. Injured Memphis police officers sent back to the streets, putting themselves and the people they protect in danger. Grave danger. Fox 13 obtained a document showing an MPD officer with a sprained wrist being sent back to full duty, but with one request: no shooting. And the police union says this is not an isolated case. The officers with injured legs are told not to run. Officers with an arm in a sling don't put on the bulletproof vest. The union says the city has contracted with a company to oversee on-the-job injury claims by MPD officers, and the city is pushing that company to rush these officers back onto the streets, saving the city money on overtime and rescheduling. What we're seeing is the uh, individuals are going to see the doctors and the doctor may state one thing and after they leave then we're finding out that their the doctor's opinions have been changed. Wow, this is amazing stuff and Fox 13's Lauren Lee broke this story, joins us now. Lauren, what is the city saying about this rushing police officers back into the line of duty, obviously not physically fit to get the job done? Well, the city is denying this. The city is saying they have no control over what the doctors order. And the union says it's prepared to sue if this continues. Wow, amazing stuff. Nice job. I heard one of the other stations tried to do it, fell woefully short. <laughs> Lauren Lee with the exclusive. Okay, let's turn to a story you've probably seen play out on some of the daytime talk shows. <laughs> Time for the final word. And there is credible evidence that spanking your child is a good way to keep them in line. And I know that in the Bible Belt, spare the rod and spoil the child is probably going to always rule the day. But there is also credible evidence that spanking children can increase the likelihood they'll grow up to be hostile, even violent. Now, if you're my age or older, you're probably old, first of all, but you probably don't know anybody who didn't get spanked. And as we often say during this debate, we turned out okay. Now, there is no question parents should have the right and the option to spank their children. What's not so certain to us, though, is whether folks at school should have the same right. And that's the final word. Hey, don't forget to add me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter, the Twitter handle, 
at Ernie Freeman. Let's go right now. TMC is up next. Good morning, Memphis starts at 4.30. We'll see you tomorrow.